guys, this is Joe Neville. Today I've got a video tutorial for you about how to build a lab on a laptop. We're going to be building a leaf spine network using HPE's virtual router, the VSR, um, building VXLAN tunnels over the top, all on a single laptop. Here's the topology, so two leaf nodes, two spine. To keep the number of VMs that I'm running on the laptop down, I'm doubling up the spines to act as the overlay nodes. So logically, this is what the network will look like. Leaf 1, Leaf 2, Spine 1, Spine 2, interconnected as you would expect, plus these two nodes, which are actually VRFs on the spine for generating the traffic that's going to be placed onto the VXLAN tunnel. Okay, I'm going to be building this with Oracle's Virtual Box. Now, a word about the version. You'll need to run a version in the 4.3. So, let's start with Leaf 1. Creating the VM. And it's li Linux, other Linux 64-bit that you want. For memory, 1024. Now I'm going to create the network adapters. So here you can see this is leaf one. I've got two interconnections between the leaf and the spine, and I've got this is a land side connection, and I'm going to use a fourth network adapter as a management link so that I can SSH onto the device. So because these ports 1 and 2 are just between VMs, I select the internal network. They don't need any access to the internet. I just name this, just put in an arbitrary name. So I've just called it 1. Same again here, internal network. Call that one 2. Adapter 3, so that's the LAN, again it's internal, call that LAN 1, and Adapter 4 is going to be the one that connects from the VM to my PC. So let's start that up. Now here I've got the, I've already downloaded the image, I'm using E0321P01, I'll put the link for the download in the description. Okay, so here for fresh install we press 1 and yes, continue the install and yes again, enter. So the VMs build, this is the VSR, the Comware boot process. And we're into the Comware prompt already. So this is leaf 1. Now at the moment, um, I've only got access to the device via this console, um, and I found that there's a problem with the copy and paste from my Windows host onto the console, and the configuration for SSH has quite a few lines to it, so I don't want to have to copy that out each time, so I found a quick and dirty workaround. I've created a small Python script, so Taking advantage of the fact that Conware's got a Python API, I've created this very simple Python script. That's on my USB, which I plug into my PC. And then I can share that with the device, just to work around because I'm lazy like that. SSH4 that I want to run. So that's generating the keys and so the SSH server is enabled, the configuration is on there for my user. Now I need to configure the management port so that's gig40. I can log in. Now the, this is the connection between the PC so that is actually this virtual box host only network that we're going to connect to. It's in the 192.168.56 slash 24. 
So the PC stop one. Just make this dot ten. Open up putty. Save that as leaf one. And we should be in good. Okay, great. So now I've got access to the device via putty rather than just through the console so I can copy and paste commands in um, and at this stage then rather than go through the process uh, for each one of the other three I just shut down make sure that's saved power off the device so the device is powered off and I want to clone it leave to reinitialize the max full clone so it'll be spine one reinitialize So I'll start up Leaf 2. Leaf 2 is now up. No, it comes up with exactly the same configuration. So it's showing Leaf 1 and it's got the IP address, the management IP address of Leaf 1. So I need to change that. So this is Leaf 2. IP address of management this runs 15 save that I also need to make sure that the network adapters are correct so leaf 2's network adapters according to this diagram leaf 2's on, f on 3 and 4 Go through changing those. The downlink will be LAN two. Spine is one and three. The adapter, because of that additional link that I've got for that I'm going to put in a VRF, it actually the third port connects into LAN one still. For the spine and spine two. two. Spine two is connected to two. LAN 2. Okay, great. So Leaf 2's up. Let's start up Spine 1, Spine 2. In Putty, I'll try to log into uh, Leaf 2. So that's leaf two. This is spine two. I'm doing this dot twelve dot twelve into putty. Finally, I've got 
Okay, so I've jumped ahead a little to save some time. Um, I've now got SSH connections to each one of the devices, and now we're past the build of the uh, virtual lab and, and into the configuration of the Conware devices. Here's the configuration again that, we, that I'm going to configure. I've got 172.16 third octet incrementing matching those network adapter link numbers. And then I've got loopbacks that I'll be advertising into OSPF. And for the overlay, there is the 172.17/24 network, and both of the nodes are going to sit in there. They're going to think that they're attached to the same layer two, spanning across my layer three core via VXLAN. So here's the Conware configuration. I like to put it in network type point to point so the devices don't wait for a DR, BDR election when they come up. Turn on, turn them on so you can see if OSPF comes up. Find two. Okay, so okay, so that's up straight away between leaf one and spine one. Okay, great. So the leaves need to be able to ping the loop back. I'll try to ping the other leaf. Fantastic. Okay, so that's the OSPF underlay. The VSR supports BGP, ISIS, so you can play around with IBGP or EBGP. Now on to building the VXLAN tunnel. So we do this on the two leaves. best order to do this in actually is to create the tunnel first we create the source so it's pinned to the loop back the, the leaves of the VTEM so the source and destination for the tunnel are the loop backs on the leaves first and we just reverse the source and destination LTVPN has to be enabled first okay so that will be the tunnel the tunnels up Okay, so an additional point, if we look at these interfaces, so these will be network adapter three, they need to be set to promiscuous mode. By default, they're deny. You must set those to promiscuous mode for the VXLAN uh, traffic to be accepted. So let's do that. So on leaf one in the settings, adapter 3 see here promiscuous mode deny I need to change that to allow VMs and do that again on leaf 2 otherwise ARP will be success you'll see the ARP is successful but pings that will fail between my nodes my overlay nodes okay so that's done right now there's the part where I have to configure the the spine to act as a node in the overlay using um, a VRF. So let's copy that. We'll use 
use the same because it's just quick and dirty for the lab I'll use exactly the same it's this third port that I need to bind to the VPN I'll give it an IP address in the 17217 range same subnet even though they're actually connected across a layer 3 core so the commands that I do in the overlay will have to be VPNs specific they'll be in this VPN LAN at the moment I can't see anything in the arc table of the spine if we do a VRF ping so I can ping myself moment I can't ping across so what I need to do now is I just need to finish off by assigning the VSI to these interfaces here to build to allow the traffic to flow from the nodes across the VXLAN tunnel so we do that it's the down facing link X connect VSI VPN A and I need to do that on the leaf as well. And we can ping across the VXLAN tunnel. So the spines acting as the nodes can see, even though they're connected across a uh, layer 3, they can see each other as though they're connected via uh, layer 2. If we want to see, see the traffic. flowing through the VXLAN tunnel here on the leave. Okay, so that's the network that I set up. So hopefully that would have been useful for you um, for just getting some hands on. As I said, you can change out the, the underlay protocol to use uh, BGP or ISIS to get some hands on with that. Really use your imagination to expand um, the network, you, your only real limit is the CPU power of your laptop. I have written all of this up in my blog. There's details there and captures, etc. in the scripts that I've been using. So that blog is available at nullzero.co.uk. You can follow me at, at Joe Neville underscore. Hope you found that useful. Thanks very much for watching.